Welcome to the Octane Render version 1.0 beta 1 overview video. This video will show some of the updates that have been made to Octane Render and some of the new functionality and will also provide a general workflow on how to work with Octane Render. So let's begin. To begin using Octane, we need to import our geometry in our scene. To do that, we'll take our mouse and go over to the graph editor. We'll right click click Add, Objects, and Mesh. We'll then navigate to our Wavefront object file and click Open. Now Octane can use any scene that has been exported in the Wavefront object file, so it can use many different modeling programs to render. The one thing to remember is that Octane Render works best when you export your object file as a triangulated mesh and not using n-gons. Okay, so once the file has been imported, it shows up as a node in the graph editor. And if we click on the node, it will immediately begin rendering it up in the render viewport. Octane Render is divided into three main working areas. The render viewport, where we'll work with manipulating our scene and actually setting it up and choosing our camera angles. Our graph editor, where everything will be displayed in nodes, and then also the node inspector where we can actually make all of the changes to parameters in the scene. Many people are intimidated by working with nodes and quite frankly at this stage of the game we actually don't even need to use this to work with Octane Render so we can just move that out of the way. There are some new preview buttons that are on the side here and across the top that will allow us to work with Octane fully functionally. One of the things I would like to do is increase the resolution so I want to fill this space nicely and work on my scene. To do that we're going to go over to the right on one of these new quick buttons over in the node inspector and we're going to click on the preview resolution and I'm going to change this to a 1024 by 768 which will fill this area nicely so we can see our scene and work on it easier. One of the key features of working with Octane Render is the ability to manipulate the viewport and be able to navigate your scene and find the best angle to produce your render at. So to be able to do that we need to understand how to manipulate this viewport and get the best out of it. By left clicking we can rotate the viewport and rotate around our scene. By using the middle button on your mouse or if you have a mouse wheel we can click on it and zoom in and out of the scene and by using our right mouse button we can pan through the scene left and right and move our objects around. Now sometimes that might be too slow for you to maneuver so if you click the shift key it will give you a 10 times speed increase while you manipulate and maneuver through your scenes. There's another way to increase the ability for you to navigate your scene and that is through the use of subsampling. And those are these three buttons that are in the middle here. Currently I'm set on no subsampling, so whenever I manipulate the scene it is in full quality. If we choose 2x2 two two subsampling mode, that means whenever I manipulate the, screen, the scene, at a slight degradation of image quality I get a great increase in feedback and, and maneuverability such that I can work with my scene in a very fluid fashion. Now if your scene is even more complex than that you can even go to a 4x4 sampling mode where it allows you to have greater interactivity and very fluid motion at the trade-off of image quality while you're manipulating it. But as soon as you stop it immediately snaps back to a no subsampling uh, function. The other thing is, is we want to be able to see when we increase our render size, it's going to extend much greater than the size of this render viewport. So if we hold the control key, and we can actually click and drag and see the edges. Now this is not a very big render, but if it was very large, we wouldn't be able to see the whole thing. So if you hold the control key and, and drag your mouse, you can actually view the various parts of your render. To manipulate materials in Octane Render, we can use the Material Picker, and then we can click anywhere in our scene, and that material will show up in the Node Inspector, where we can make any changes that we need to with that material. So one of the things I'd like to do is, let me click on this motherboard, and 
we need to make some changes here. Now there are basically three different material types in Octane currently. There's a diffuse flat material, there is a glossy shiny material good for metals or plastics, and then there's also a specular material which is a transparent or glassy material. I'm going to turn the motherboard into a glossy material. So I have an image that's used for my diffuse coloring, but it's way too specular, and I want to use an, an image map to adjust that specularity. So I can adjust the specularity by, by changing it here, and you can see how glossy we get. Um, but I can also change this data type to accept an image. Now, if you want a full color image to be used in Octane, you would use the image type, and that's good for the diffuse color. But if you're using like a bump map or a specularity map, we should use the float image type because it actually requires much less video memory to load that image because it's loaded as a grayscale image. Even if you load a color image, it will convert it to grayscale and use less video memory. So uh, with GPU-based rendering, we need to conserve our video RAM because we don't have as much available as we do on a traditional rendering program. So I'm going to adjust the specular power down and then get some some targeted specularity on my motherboard. Uh, also this RAM here is, uh, I think I'm just going to set that as a diffuse material. So you can click on anything that's in your scene and you can change its colors and change whether how much specularity and such uh, with, with ease by just using the material picker and changing colors and such. Next I'd like to adjust some environment settings. So I'm going to hit the mouse wheel back and we can take a look that we are on just a plain white environment, great big background, and then my studio setup, my object is, is right here. So let's rotate back and I'd like to add an HDRI map here to give us some more interest. So to do that I'm going to go over to this rounded background here. This is our environment. And I'm going to change its texture type from a float to an image. Now Octane Render comes with 10 different studio HDRI files, so I'm just going to choose one of those and open it up. And now we can see the environment, which just got two lights, one on the left and one on the right. So, one of the neat things about working with Octane Render is that we can manipulate our HDRI file in real time. So I would like to turn this light a little bit more to the front facing on it, so we can go down here to the rotation and we can actually rotate our HDRI file any which way we would like, and we can actually also rotate it up and down as well. So if you get a file and it's not exactly pointed right, instead of going back and forth between your rendering software and your and your 3D software to try to adjust everything, you can move it in real time and get it to just exactly the right spot that you want it. And so you can actually do that while you're looking at your scene too, and, and take a look and see if the shadows are in the spot where you'd like them and if they're not then you can start continuing to twist the the HDRI file until you get the scene set just the way you'd like to. We can also adjust the power of our HDRI file instead of having to adjust everything with the exposure. So if it's not quite bright enough we can go and click here or use the slider and and change it so that we can and add a little bit more illumination to our scene.